Everybody remain calm. It's happening. It's actually happening. Dale Jr. is bringing back the number eight Budweiser car and Frankie Muniz going full time in 2025. Let's talk about all of it. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. You heard me correctly. It's happening. It really is actually happening. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is bringing back the famous Budweiser number eight car for select late model races in 2024 and 2025. To quote Meek Mill, I used to pray for times like these. Everybody wants to see that number eight Budweiser car back on track, and you're going to get your opportunity to see that. Obviously not NASCAR races, but in select late model races, the first one being November 23rd in the South Carolina 400 at Florence Speedway in, well, you guessed it, South Carolina. That's great news. It's going to be very cool to see that Bud number eight car back out on the track. So on Monday night, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was starting to drop some hints. He changed his profile picture on Twitter to the 2004 Daytona 500 Victory Lane. He's standing there in a Bud suit spraying down champagne. And then he tweeted out a photo, an old advertisement from Budweiser of him sitting on the ground looking up at a uh, tall boy, a Bud Heavy there. And everyone's like, okay, something's going on here. Then Tony Yuri Jr. changed his Facebook cover photo to the number eight car, number eight Budweiser car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. And you're like, okay, they're cooking something over here. So if you remember back a few months ago, Teresa Earnhardt let the number eight trademark expire, the trademark on the stylized number eight DEI font. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Holdings, DEJ Holdings, then applied for that trademark. They are now listed as the owners of that trademark. It is still pending technically on the USPTO office, but it will be approved once they finally get around to it. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. will bring that number eight car, blow off the mothballs, bring it out of retirement, and enter it into a race, which is really, really cool. Obviously, he's driven the number eight car in the Xfinity series, but it hasn't been that DEI stylized number eight font. Uh, he hasn't driven a number eight Budweiser car since Homestead 2007, his last NASCAR Cup Series race with DEI before making that move over to Hendrick Motorsports. And he hasn't driven that, you know, stylized number eight in just as long, honestly, at this point. So for Dale, getting back into that car that he made so famous is really exciting. And obviously, he said he doesn't have any 2025 NASCAR car Xfinity Series plans, but you have to imagine that if he does make another Xfinity Series start, it will likely be with that style, that number eight stylized font, which I think everybody wants to see. I will say this, the design team over at Junior Motorsports has absolutely been working overtime because they rolled out an entire line uh, with this announcement and it looks absolutely phenomenal. If you're a fan of like the late 90s, early 2000s NASCAR uh, t-shirts, the vintage ones that everybody wants to get their hands on now, they're rolling out two of them, which are peak peak examples of what people are looking for. They look absolutely fantastic. It's a little too much for me, but I know people are going to love them and I'm so excited to see them at the racetrack. They have two different versions of it. They also have a whole line of merchandise as well. You can already pre-order the diecast cars of this. You're going to see a ton a ton of this new Dale Earnhardt Jr. number eight Budweiser merchandise at racetracks very soon. Overall, this is great for everybody involved. It's great for grassroots racing. People are going to come out to these races to see Dale Jr. drive that number eight car. It's great for Dale Jr. to, you know, um, bring his relationship with Budweiser back. And obviously he had such a long relationship with them, even had a personal services contract. And now for them to get back onto a race car is very cool. Also to see Anheuser-Busch support grassroots racing is really cool as well. I mean, they are now on uh, the Harvick late model when he runs there. They got Bush on the side of it. They're now putting Budweiser on the side of the Dale Jr. car. Sure, they're big names, but big names are bringing big money into the sport. And that's good for, for everybody involved there. So if you're excited about seeing the number eight, you can go ahead and buy your merch. You can go ahead and buy tickets to the South Carolina 400 on November 23rd. He'll also be at select races in 2025 as well. No, he's not buying charters. No, he's not coming back to the Cup Series. No, he's not kicking Kyle Busch out of the number eight car at RCR and fielding his own number eight um, in the Cup Series. None of that is happening. I know people are going to wildly speculate about that. We've been over this countless times. He's not buying charters at their current prices without a partner coming in. He has said he would look at per buying into a team as an equity partner. But no, the number eight car, especially the number eight DEI style font is not coming back to the Cup Series. That is RCR's number. That is theirs to do what they want with right now. That's why they have their own style font on it. Everything that goes along with it. Um, so that's totally fine. It is very cool, though, to see this number coming back to the uh, to racing in general. Um, and then to have Dale Earnhardt Jr. back behind the wheel. Obviously, he drove the number three car this year when he made his select late model stock starts. Now we'll get to see him drive that number eight car later this year and then into next year.
Also announced on Tuesday, probably a little bit overshadowed by the Dale Earnhardt Jr. announcement, is the fact that agent Cody Banks will be going full-time in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series in 2025 with the Rayum brothers. Three wide Malcolm in the middle will be piloting that number 33 truck after making select starts for the team in 2024. He has two starts coming at Nashville and Kansas. He has a 31st and a 29th place finish overall there. No word on who the sponsor is, but maybe Paul Giamatti from Big Fat Liar can sell off that fancy house and throw him some cash or help out Amanda Bynes at the same time. Honestly, it's very cool to see Frankie Muniz chasing his racing dreams. Obviously, he started off doing some open wheel stuff, some Toyota Atlantic stuff, and then put that on pause and then decided to become a stock car driver and did some ARCA West, some ARCA National stuff. He's dabbled in the truck series, dabbled in the Xfinity series this year as well with Joey Gase making two starts over there and then a attempted start at Portland did not qualify for that race. His ARCA season in 2023 was pretty respectable in all honesty. He finished fourth in the point standings, got a top five finish, uh, with that Rhett Jones racing team. And honestly, that's probably the team he really should have pushed for in the Xfinity series because when they made select starts this year with Noah Grax, and that car has been very competitive in the Xfinity series. And my biggest concern for Frankie Muniz going into next year is the level of equipment that the Raymond brothers bring. Now, this isn't a knock on the Raymond brothers. They are a small budget team. They are not start and park, but they're generally in the back half of the field, the back quarter of the field, even at that. And Frankie Muniz has expressed his frustration multiple times Times, uh, both through the media and on social media about how his racing luck hasn't worked out for him, whether it's been caught up in a wreck or whether that's mechanical failures or something going wrong with the race car or the race truck. And my biggest concern is he's going over to a small budget team, a team that traditionally does not contend for wins, does not contend for top fives, even at that. And I just don't want to see him go over there expecting something, but also getting super frustrated with the lack of performance that comes out of those trucks. They do a good job. They're bootstrapped. They work hard, but they're not the race winning trucks. They're not top 10, top 15 contending trucks week in and week out. Now, if they do get like a, you know, a bump up in Ford performance support uh, from the Ford factory, then that works out really well for them. But I don't think that they're going to become a Ford factory team. I don't know how much help they're going to get out of it. Um, I mean, we've seen the other Fords over there struggle as well. So it kind of remains up in the air sort of where they're going to, uh, you know, slot out at probably in the back portion of the field, but I just don't want to see Frankie get frustrated about that because I hope he knows going into this that it's going to be a battle. Like you're going to be in the back area. You're going to be back like where the Haley Deegans were hanging out at. And you know, you mess around with the squirrels long enough, nuts are going to get busted. And that's what's going to happen here. And uh, just hope that he tempers expectations going into 2025. So let me know in the comments what you think about Dale Jr. bringing back that Budweiser number eight car and what you think about Frankie Muniz going full time in the truck series in 2025. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Blog.